Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and today we are gonna do couching on your Bernina. Now, couching is appliquing thread onto material with a special stitch or a zigzag stitch or whatever. It's sewing thread down onto material. And you can do this using a Bernina 215 and up even some really older Bernina. So you're not gonna wanna miss this demo. I do have a special treat for you, however, because we're gonna do couching on the embroidery module. That's right. So if you have a Bernina that has an embroidery module on it, bust it out and uh, we'll get started with it. So let's talk about the feet. So let's talk about the first foot that we're gonna use. Now this is for really simple couching and it's gonna be for really thin thread. This is the number six um, decorative stitch foot or Bernina calls it an embroidery foot, but really what we're paying attention to is the fact that it's got that little hole in the foot because we're gonna thread that through. And this is our cordonnet thread. So normally we would use this for uh, corded buttonholes or something like that, but you know, it does have an application for couching. Other couching feet, this is the number 22 couching foot. And you can see here in this situation, we've got like this little flap that goes over that like that. But this foot has three channels in it and each one of those channels can hold a thickness of thread. And I've got the uh, La Espiga thread here that works really well when you have the three channels on it. So we're gonna give that a try. Just like the number 22 foot, there's also the 25 foot, which is this one right here. And it too has that little latch that can hold the threads in there. But on this one, it's got five channels. So that can accommodate a little bit thinner thread. And that's what we're gonna be using for this. This um, is a little bit thinner. It's a metallic and polyester thread blend. It's actually called Razzle Dazzle. Finally, we've got the Bernina Bulky Overlock Foot. This is number 12C. There's also a 12 and there's also a 21, which is very similar. But you can see here that this foot is really notched out nicely for thicker yarns and it's got a little hole in it that will allow us to feed cording through. And I've just got like twine here, but you know, all's fair when we're doing fun embellishing. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how to do free motion couching using the Bernina number 43 free motion couching foot and once again with that one we're using the La Espiga thread. Another thing is we are going to use this on our embroidery module when we get to that because we're also going to do couching on that. So let's get started. For our first assignment, should you choose to take it, we're going to be using stitch number 22 and we are going to have a little skinny stitch width. We're going to go to about 1.5 in width. I'm going to put my number six foot on and feed that thread through the foot. Here's our number six foot that I'm getting ready to put on the machine, but before I put it on, I'm gonna feed my cording thread through the machine. So I just took a piece of the uh, Metrazine Cordonnet, and that is, um, you know, you can see the thickness of it there. I don't know if I'd wanna sew through that through the needle, but it's really fun to use for this dainty project. So. I'm gonna use one of these needle threaders. Uh, this comes with the number 43 couching foot, so you would have it with that. You also get some of these with your Bernina 880 Plus. However, you can also purchase some of these. Then this gives me like a little extra oomph that I can feed through the bottom of my foot. like that and then put my foot on Ta -da! undo it from my threader now I have a light purple to coordinate with this but I have a contrasting thread in my bobbin but the point is is I'm just going to go left to right with these different couching techniques so you can see what we're doing I'm going to put my foot down Okay, so I'm ready to get started, and I am I just gave a little bit of tail here of my skinny thread that I'm going to stitch over. I'm lowering my foot, and then I'm just going to let the foot guide the thread in front of my needle.
look at that example and how it held the thread on there. That looks pretty cool. And that was really easy. The foot did all the work for us. Now, with foot number 22, we actually want to feed our three separate threads into these channels right here. And so I'm just gonna do them one at a time. And you can notice I'm doing them before I put them on the machine, or before I put the foot on the machine, rather. This thread is very dense. So now there it goes. And now I'm gonna put my close my door, my little trap door. Don't want anything falling out. Okay. Actually, I think this thread is a little too thick. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave our trap door open. Just gonna feed it back through here. Just gonna pull a little. I've taken my thread and I've gotten it under my foot. Now this thread that I'm using is a little too thick to close the trap door here and have it still feed properly, but it's still gonna do a pretty good job. Now I wanna show you what stitch I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna go to my decorative stitches and I'm gonna pick the 400 series. And I'm gonna scroll down and use stitch number 422. I really like this one because it's gonna do three little satin stitches in a group and you'll see how cool that works with this thread that we chose. And I'm not making any adjustments to the stitch width or length. I'm just gonna start my stitch and, um, and this is gonna be something really pretty. So let's get started. And I'm doing this in a curve formation, just so that you can see how the foot holds the thread along my calf. So I can just really focus on just gently encouraging my stitching. how cool that is. I even like it with that purple thread. This would be such a pretty embellishment on a pillow, a dress around the neckline. It really feels like trim. We're gonna put on the number 25. Now the 25 works just like the number 22, except we can use this thinner thread. And the thinner thread is Razzle Dazzle here. And it comes on a spool like this from Superior. We carry this in a variety of colors. And so I'm gonna just take my threads and I'm gonna feed them under my foot in this little slot. You can see that there's a little slot here that I got them in so that I can spread out my little threads, get them locked together, and get them under my foot. All right, well, what kind of stitch do we want to use? I think I'm just going to go for something really simple, like a running zigzag stitch. So this stitch is a zigzag, but it goes stitch, 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 stitch. Some people call it a serpentine stitch, but let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna feed my sample fabric under here. I'm lowering my presser foot, and now I'm just gonna get started. Once again, I'm kind of doing a little turning maneuver 
just so that you can see how the foot is doing the job to hold the different threads together. And so there is our Razzle Dazzle couch on. But you can see you get two very different looks, or three very different looks rather, with these different threads. Now we're gonna give the um, twine like this a try, and we're gonna use the number 12C foot, the bulky overlock foot. And I'm gonna do this a couple different ways. So I'm gonna sew for a little bit and show you something and then go back and, and sew something else. So the main things you wanna remember is all we're gonna be doing is adjusting stitch width, stitch length, and needle positions on this. So I'll, I'll explain to you what I'm doing as I'm sewing it. So I've got the 12C foot on the machine. And if you needed, and sometimes I do with this, a needle threader, or not a needle threader, the little loop threader thing that we used earlier. I'm just gonna feed that back through our foot and now I fed this through. So picture doing something where you might wanna sew little um, peppermint stuff. This is like twine from the grocery store, but it's kind of a fun thing to play around with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower my presser foot and now I am gonna adjust my stitch width to 1.5 and I'm gonna move my needle position over two clicks to the left. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna do a zigzag just on the edge of my peppermint. It's just catching a little bit of the string. I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna cut my cording here. I wanna use it again, so I'm gonna leave it back here like that. But now look, look, you can't even see my stitches there, okay? So look at, at what a cool idea that might be, right? Another thing that you can do with this is you could actually widen your stitch width just a little bit. And now I'm at about 2.2. And now I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I'm just gonna go on the folded edge of this. So this would be a cute little thing to do along a hem, to make faux piping. There's all kinds of fun things you can do with this. So I'm just gonna make sure I get just a little bit as I stitch. I'm gonna cut and I've got one more thing I want to show you so I don't want to unthread my foot but now look look at our cute little oops <laughs> look at the cute little edge and that would be perfect on something folded over and of course your monofilament thread would would make a perfect selection there so you wouldn't see your stitching at all all right finally there's a thing I like to do. And this time I'm adjusting my stitch width to four and a half. I'm putting my needle position back at center and I'm doing my stitch length at 0.35 because this is gonna be a satin stitch. And now I'm just gonna satin stitch over this cord. Now you probably noticed I do have stabilizer in here and mostly the stabilizer is for the benefit of this satin stitching. Otherwise I get too much tunneling. And tunneling is when the zigzag stitch makes your fabric squeeze up and look bad. Cutting. And there's our satin stitch over our cording. That just gives a nice little, a nice little bump if I can, you can 
can see that. If you needed to add texture, if you needed to just make something look like rat tail. Now I'm using a cotton thread, which isn't very shiny, but if you used a nice shiny, shiny poly or a, or a um, rayon thread, that, that would also give you like a rat tail look. All right, there's one more sewing couching thing to go, and that's our number 43 couching foot. All right, I've got my threader, I've got my 43 free motion couching foot, and my La Espiga cord. So I'm gonna take my threader and get that cord through there. And then this one, you're gonna feed the wire through the side of the foot right there. Then you're gonna take it and feed it down the hole of the foot. There we go. Undo the threader. And now let's just see what that looks like. So the thread goes through here and then down through the hole like that. And then on the machine. And I have dropped my feed dogs and selected a straight stitch. I dropped my feed dogs because we are just gonna be doing our own little curve with this. And then I just let the thread lay next to me. So here we go, straight stitch. And normally you would use a clear thread or a very thin thread. And I know some of you that are addicted to your Bernina stitch regulator will be like, does this have stitch regulation? No, it doesn't. However, you don't really need it because if you're using the clear thread, you're really not gonna see your stitches. not done yet okay we're gonna leave this foot on I'm gonna put on my embroidery module and I'm gonna show you the coolest thing you will see today all right so I have a large hoop of aqua mesh stabilizer one layer that is a water soluble stabilizer that's gonna be dissolved after our project I have a layer of bamboo batting and some flannel. This is similar. This is the same stuff that I've been using for our samples. So that's the supplies that we need. I also told you we're gonna need some more of the La Espiga cording, which I have on deck. But the next thing that we wanna do is just simply go into embroidery mode. So I'm gonna do that by pressing the home button on my Bernina 770, selecting the embroidery. The little arm is moving and it wants me to put the hoop on. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm gonna let it think. Now it left off with the last design that I made, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick a new design. And I'm picking a preloaded design in our quilting section. And I'm picking stitch number 10. And I can zoom in on this so you can see what it looks like. Here we are with this design. Now, when you're picking your designs, it's really important that you pick a design that is just a simple straight stitch, no triple straight stitch. So nothing that goes back on itself like boom, 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 boom. You don't want that, it won't look as pretty. This particular design is just like quilting. It goes stitch, 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 stitch. So that's the kind of design you want for this. Obviously, if you have the Bernina embroidery software, it will be easy for you to digitize something. So I picked this, I'm not enlarging or reducing, but I am gonna tell the machine what foot I have, cause it's telling me, it's recommending foot number 26, but the machine can work with foot number 43. So that's the one I'm selecting. 
I also put my straight stitch needle plate on there, so I'm gonna tell it that. And now I'm ready to stitch. So I'm gonna press my little needle and boom, boom, boom. So I'm laying my fabric with the batting in the hoop. And this is gonna stick to this pretty easily. And I'm just centering it. I've done this example like a few times, so I know exactly where to put my material. And just like that is good. Now I need to feed the La Espiga thread through the foot. Remember, we're gonna go through the side of the foot and I could do this before I put the foot on. So we're gonna go through that. There it goes. And then we're gonna go down the little hole here. I'll get my hands out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing there. And now I'm gonna choke up just a little bit. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch for a little bit and then we're gonna cut the tail of this off and then we'll finish our design. If you want, you can slow the speed down just a little bit. Okay, there I am trimming my end. And then I'm just gonna hold the bulk of the stuff over to the side, but I'm not leaving the side of my machine. I'm gonna babysit this the whole time. Now, once again, you would probably like to use a very fine, thin thread like the bottom line or a monofilament thread in the top so you don't see your stitching at all. I'm just using a cotton purple thread just because for demonstration purposes, sometimes I like to show people what the thread is doing. All right, so we're done, and I'm gonna leave a tail long enough to feed through a darning needle to hide this cord under my finished work. But look, came out pretty good, I think. Okay, so we have some pretty cool little samples. Our first one might have been my favorite just because I love the color and the sparkle of that razzle-dazzle thread. The next one is a little experiment where, you know, we just kind of tried some fun stuff, which is the point of experimenting and having fun and enjoying your sewing. And then finally, we have really the best looking one because it's automated with that embroidery module, but hopefully this gives you an excuse to dust it off and give it a try if you haven't been using it. Now, don't forget to tune in to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel for more videos like this. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And if you could like, comment, and subscribe and click the little bell when you want an alert 
when we add more videos just like this one. So in the meantime, happy sewing, happy couching, and stay safe.